So joining us today is the athletic Spanish football writer Dermot Corrigan, who is based in Madrid, as well as our Spanish editor Thomas Hill Lopez Manchero. Right, on Wednesday night, Atletico Madrid will be taking Borussia Dortmund in the first leg of their Champions League quarter final, and we know it's going to be a rowdy at the Metropolitano. Right, Dermot, tell us. For people who don't know of Diego Simeone's tenure at Atletico Madrid, give us some of his highlights and what he's achieved at that club. Yeah, it, like he's been there so long that it, it's kind of hard to remember how just what a basket case Atletico Madrid were before Diego Simeone arrived. Like I was recently enough arrived in Madrid myself at that stage. And when you go to the Calderon, it was a really old stadium. The like the, just before Simeone was was hired. They got knocked out of the Copa del Rey by a semi-pro team at home. Whistles, ugly chants. Players were not popular at all with the with the fans. The club ownership was not popular. The club had huge debts. Well, had had huge debts. Still have those huge debts, but they had had huge debts. Um, it was just a club going nowhere in you know really a sad kind of situation for Atletico Madrid. Simeone comes in, former hero, you know, with the fans. Had played in the team that won La Liga in the nineteen nineties. Um, had a couple of spells, came back as well. And within six months, you know, he galvanized the whole place, um, had this new kind of style of football for Atletico or or had gone back to the roots of Atletico being like aggressive, a defending strong, fighting for every ball, um, pride in, in the jersey, you know, won Europa League, won the Copa del Rey and won, won a La Liga title. And they were amazing achievements. Like for people who, who followed Atletico, that was like, some of the best times of their life. Remember the, the 2014 Copa del Rey final? Mm. Atletico had not beaten Real Madrid for 13 years um, in any competition. You know, they'd gone like 22 games or something without, and they were just kind of laughed at by, by Madrid. But Simeone instilled the pride. They went to the Bernabeu, beat Real Madrid in the, in their own home in the Copa del Rey final. Um, and that was amazing. Now that all seems kind of a long time ago because he's been there for so long that people have maybe a little bit forgotten about what, what an achievement it is to have Atletico in the last 16 of the Champions League. Like they are the club with the uh, the lowest budget of the eight teams who, who are left, like Dortmund are, are seventh. But so they're, they're outsiders. Um, they were outsiders kind of against Inter in, in the last round as well, and they beat them. So it's hard to expect Atletico to, to compete against um, Barcelona and Real Madrid all the time. Also off the pitch, you know, there's been a lot of changes under Simeone's time because of the money that he's generated for the club, especially to being in the Champions League every year. They moved to to a new stadium, which is a nice, shiny, new, modern stadium. Um, it'll be packed again tonight for for Dortmund. And he's just taken the club to another level. But whether he can take them much further is kind of the the question. He's kind of treading water a bit. You know, they won the league during COVID, which was another amazing achievement. It was kind of a little bit strange because it was, it was during COVID when it happened. Don't really get a feeling that they believe they could win the La Liga title. Maybe... They'd love to win the Champions League, but again, they're outsiders for it. So they've kind of hit a plateau um, with Simeone and the club. And it's a, yeah, it's an interesting situation to be in, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I'm just wondering like, what, why the board have sort of stuck with him for so long. You mentioned there, you look, the amount of money he's brought into the club, Champions League qualifications and and trophies for sure. Um, but like most managers, as we see, like the Arsene Wenger's of this world or even Sir Alex Ferguson's of this world, you know, there's a point where you go, Phew. Do we need something new? Do we try something new? What What's still in there for Simeone and the board there at Atletico Madrid? Yeah, it, it is super interesting. And a couple of years ago, it was really a feeling that they were just kind of drifting apart, especially Joe Felix was kind of a, mm. a flashpoint because the club had invested so much money in him. He was a different type of player, you know, stylish, maybe doesn't work quite as hard as Simeone would want, almost to try and move the club to a, a new kind of level. Um, Simeone and Jack Felix just didn't get on. And for a while, it seemed that maybe the board would go with Joe Felix over, over Simeone. But Simeone turned things around and, you know, gritted it out kind of and showed that his way could at least keep Atletico, you know, qualifying, finishing third in the in the table every year, qualifying for the Champions League. And there's just fear as well that Atletico's owners, you know, they've been at the club, the, the club, the main owner of the club is Hill Marine. His dad was the president back in the 1990s, Cerezo the present you know he's been there since the 1990s as well and they've always been kind of again there's a lot of fans have always been kind of against the the owners and the owners remember what it was like without Simeone so if they get rid of him maybe they bring in somebody else some you know new flashy exciting new coach but if it doesn't work out they don't qualify for the Champions League the fans are unhappy 
Um, there's also Atletico are kind of for sale. If you talk to people, you know, the kind of movers and shakers, people who get involved in, in buying and selling La Liga clubs, always talk about how how Atletico are up for sale. They already have US investors who have a who have a share in the club. Um, over time, they've had different people involved from China, from Israel, from from Azerbaijan. You know, the mm. the owners they know how to to do deals and and, and move in in that kind of world. So maybe they're preparing for a sale, you know, at some stage down, down the line. And keeping Simeone in charge is also the most kind of uh, rational thing to do in that situation because you don't want to take the risk of what might happen with somebody else. So again, they're kind of, for, from Simeone's point of view as well, it's like he's had chances to go somewhere else. Maybe he could have jumped to Chelsea, for instance, you know, five, six years ago. Might have turned out different. But he's also been in a great situation here. He He really loves Atletico. He has a young family here in in Madrid. He was he's become part of the, the the social scene around the city as well. The the mayor got married at the weekend. Was marrying the like an aristocratic. His wife is like an aristocrat. Is related to the Spanish king. <laughs> former Spanish king was at the wedding. Simeone was at the wedding with his his current partner Carla. She was showing it off on on Instagram. And he's he's become you know part of of that scene. Again, it would be difficult for him to go somewhere else and recreate what he has done at Atletico. So he's he's kind of stuck with Atletico. Atletico are stuck with him, and and that's where they are at the minute. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to talk about uh, where he possibly could have gone or go a little later on. But but Thomas, you know this idea of. Uh... A coach staying on for so long it's a bit of a rarity these days you look at I mentioned Wenger earlier 20 odd years at Arsenal Ferguson close enough to 30 years Klopp and Guardiola haven't even done 10 years in their 10 years someone doing 12 years that's such a rarity these days yeah exactly and and as Dermot says it kind of uh you know belies the fact that Atletico still remain a little bit of a basket case of a club in in some ways there's there's always some kind of chaos behind the scenes I think in many ways, Simeone's greatest achievement has been making Atletico seem like a like a really stable club. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, if he goes to the end of this contract, which, you know, there's no guarantees because he just renewed his deal until 2027, but he'll have been there for 16 years, which is unheard of, really, in, in La Liga. And as you say, strongest comparisons, probably Wenger, Ferguson. Uh, Nick Miller's written a really good piece today on on how we should celebrate that longevity, on how it's so rare. But as, as Dermot alludes to there what happens after that a lot of these coaches have become so embedded within the fabric of those clubs it's hard to it's hard to imagine them anywhere else and i think the same the same goes for for Simeone. yeah one thing that you know any opposition fan knows about Simeone and his team is that sort of do or die attitude and that that comes from a lot of the players you know I think about some of the great Simeone players Koke still there obviously uh, Savic currently there Felipe Luiz uh, Juan Fran Diego Costa Gabi uh, Godin Miranda I mean these are warriors what what is that through his design is that are those the kind of players he looks to bring into the club but also how does he transmit that kind of passion towards the players so he gets that, you know what, we're going to battle kind of uh, feeling from them? Yeah, I think that is his, his design because, uh, it's, as you say there, I, all, all of those players are kind of on-pitch generals, which maybe contrasts with someone like Jao Felix, who's, who's a very different kind of kind of figure and a very different kind of player. I mean, the, the players who have had the most success under him, I know he, he released this documentary a couple of years ago, which I think Dermot wrote about and Torres talked about how motivationally you know, nobody is 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 on a par with him. You see him jumping around on the touchline and it's not an act. That's the kind of thing that he transmits in the dressing room as well. And, and I think you can see that he's he's genuine with that, that transmits to, to players when they're not doing so well. Maybe you'd argue there's a bit of a disconnect there. Mm. Uh, that maybe that's when that's been when the players haven't believed his his message so much. But at the moment, I mean, just look at that Inter Milan, you know, last, last 16, uh, second leg at the Metropolitano it was it was unreal what he what he managed to transmit how he managed to kind of conduct the the crowd as well um I think that does come down to his football upbringing as well proud Argentine as we know I think there are links there both of those you know the country and the club both see themselves as underdogs even even if Argentina have won won the World Cup three times right but there's that kind of fighting spirit in in both of them which which he's transmitted in this Atletico team. Yeah, Dermot, do Atleti fans love the, the dark arts of football uh, as Atletico Madrid have now <laughs> become to know for, you know, no one wants to play a team like this in the Champions League for those reasons. Yeah, Atletico, they definitely do enjoy it. And especially 
when they're up against say Real Madrid or Barcelona or or Man City or or Liverpool in the in the Champions League, they do enjoy those backs to the wall performances and the the warrior types that you your Godins and your Gabbies and guys like that. They also there's a lot of Atletico fans who like to play good football good football as well. And Simeone has over time kind of evolved the team. If you watch them kind of week to week when they're not, you know, outgunned in a in a big Champions League game, they play, you know, built up football they <laughs> from the back. I was just kind of thinking about it preparing for this as well. Like in the they usually play a back three and within that back three is Axel Witzel, who's a midfielder for most of his career, and Mario Hermoso, who's uh a centre back, but he's more known for his ability on the ball than he would be for, you know, diving head head first to, to block the ball as you know Atletico defenders kind of used to do in the past. And Simeone, he's kind of been caught a little bit between two stools with that because the he, he wants to evolve how, how he plays as well. He's brought in coaches like Nelson Vivas, who who was at Arsenal, who um, you know, understand kind of more modern football and joined up football possession football. And when they're playing it in La Liga and even against Madrid at, at times in, in the Super Cup, they do look to get it down, play through midfield. They have a lot of skillful players like Griezmann um, in, in the team. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the big Champions League nights and the the emotions are high and so much is on the line, they do have that extra kind of passion and, and fight in them. And a little bit of niggle. I remember that, well, some a little bit of niggle or a lot of niggle depending on on how it goes. Like, But the, the current team don't have a... Diego Costa or a Diego Godin mm. in there. They don't have that, I'm going to say, violent edge to them or that kind of nasty, nasty streak to them, which Simeone himself definitely did have a, as a player and transmits. But they're they're not quite the, the warriors of old. Um, yeah, for, for sure. But I mean, you could say Savage. I've seen him pinch a few players here <laughs> or there. Or, I mean, he's a juggernaut at best. He's still got one or two still left out there. Don't that, that. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let, let's move to sort of how, how he's viewed in, in, in Spain just in general. And let, let's actually start with uh, uh, Atleti at, at this moment in time, Dermot. You know, um, you spoke about, you know, that sort of hero status, you know, coming under pressure, especially last season. Um, has that changed? Uh, have, you know, have fans now looked at it and gone, you know what, maybe someday this might not be our future for, forever. Maybe it's probably time that we might start looking at a new style of football or potentially even a, a new manager. Yeah, there was just a couple of years ago, I was saying before, there was a time when, when Joe Felix would be substituted by Simeone in a game and there would be some whistles around the stadium. Like he's such a, He's such a beautiful player to watch when he's on form and when he's do, doing his thing. He's, you know, there's technically there's few players like him. And, you know, a lot of Atletico fans kind of fell in love with him when he when he arrived first. I, I did a little bit too, because, you know, just watching what he could do was was amazing. And th there was also a, a feeling from the top of the club that they wanted to to progress. I remember Hill Marine made did a couple of interviews talking about like the post Simeone era, which was quite interesting. And this was around the time that Luis Enrique was going to leave the, the Spain job or there was a good chance he'd lose the Spain job. And for a while, it seemed like the, the worlds were kind of aligning that Luis Enrique would leave Spain and Simeone's contract would end and, and he would end up taking over at Atletico. But Simeone turned it around. He kind of won the, the internal battle within the dressing room, within the with the other people at the club who were also kind of power holders at the club and within the stands that everybody backed him. But while they're in the Champions League, while there's a chance to go and do something which Atletico have never never won the Champions League, come so close twice under under Simeone when they lost to Madrid both times in, in heartbreaking fashion. And that's still there as something that they've never done. There's something that he's never done. There's an interview with Azpilicueta, who mm -hmm. signed for, from Chelsea last summer in the, the local press this week. And he's talking about how he's been, he's kind of joined this mission to, to win a Champions League with Atletico. He's seen how important it is. He's, he's won it at Chelsea. He can bring that experience. And he was the one who was there in the, in the huddle after the when it went to penalties against Inter Milan, that it wasn't Simeone who was going around giving the final G up. It was as Billy Quetta. Mm. And sometimes Simeone does he likes that to be able to give you know responsibility to the, the people in the dressing room. Maybe there's not as many big figures in it at the minute as Billy Quetta has kind of filled in that that role. But uh, yeah, while they're all together on this kind of mission, I think in the Champions League this season, then they will all stick together. Where they you know if they lose two 0 at home tonight. They're playing Girona at the weekend. They lose their, um, you know, their Champions League. Chance of making the Champions League for next season might come in under trouble. And that's when you would, from the top of the club, would we'll be looking at it and going, well, if Simeone can't guarantee us the Champions League, then, you know, that that's a problem. But again, they usually 
get their get their stuff together by the end of the season to, to finish fourth. So uh, I'd expect it'll probably happen again. Yeah, I mean, Thomas, I'm just looking at the La Liga standings. Uh, Athletic Club, uh, 56 points. Atletico Madrid, 58 points. Yes, they might get fourth, but it's it's touch and go. And you're looking at a, a Bilbao squad who've just won the Copa del Rey, gathering momentum. I mean, if, if they finish fifth, I, I think we, we, we sort of, done the look on this, what would be their lowest finish uh, since 2011-2012 season? I mean, you're talking about pushing the club forward. If they don't make Champions League again or finish within the top four and he signed a new contract till 2027, do you see what I'm trying to say here? Is he taking the club forward? I think this this league season has been uh, has been really disappointing because just look at how Girona, okay, their, their title challenge has now petered out, but that's a club albeit with the backing of City Football Group, where their spending cap is is not as big mm-hmm. as, as Atletico's, their La Liga imposed spending cap. Atletico, there was there was scope for them to really challenge challenge this year, and that just hasn't happened for for whatever reason. There's been a couple of of quite quite damaging results, including against mm-hmm. against Girona, actually. Um I don't know how likely it is that Athletic Club catch them. I guess it, it kind of depends a bit on what the what the hangover is like after they they won the Copa del Rey. <laughs> yeah, Dermot said they're still celebrating at the moment, aren't they? <laughs> that's it. That's it. So you know whether whether or not they can they can push Atletico all the way, but clearly it is a worry, and I think it's it's all on the Champions League now. Obviously, they've got a decent tie against mm-hmm. Dortmund. They're on what you probably say was the right side of the draw, either a PSG side who okay have Mbappe, but probably maybe have flaws elsewhere, uh, a Barcelona side who they would probably back to beat on their on their day. Um, but yeah, it's 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 all on the Champions League now, really, for them. They also, you know, exited in the Copa del Rey to to Athletic, uh, Super Copa de España had a bit of a disappointing de- defeat to Real Madrid. There, it's all in the Champions League, and and you surely wouldn't begrudge Simeone finally lifting that title after those two, you know, really depressing results for for Atletico. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and Dermot, yeah, I mean, the Champions League's the one, really. And I mean, I look at. The, the likely suitors there, Manchester City, uh, Bayern Munich, uh, PSG to a certain degree, Real Madrid. Um, if Atleti, Atletico Madrid can can lift the cup against those guys, I mean, wow, what a tenure. You know, they've already got two European Cups under Simeone uh, as we speak, but the Champions League, that's the golden, that's the golden goose, isn't it? It really is for, for Atletico fans because they get to live in the city with Real Madrid, who... You know, seem to win it almost every second year, and you know, talk about it a lot, and how they're they're the kings of Europe. And Atletico are kind of like the little brothers here in in Madrid. It's something kind of hanging over them that they have. They've regained a lot of pride, like from before before Simeone came in, just didn't really want to talk about football with their with the Real Madrid supporting fans. Now they've you know got to a stage where they can compete against Madrid. Um, in one on one, can can take them on, beat them in La Liga earlier on this season, and they will fancy their chances at home. Like against Dortmund, maybe it's a fifty fifty game. You know, budget wise and and squad wise, you could look at it and say um, difficult one to predict. And both clubs have had kind of up and down seasons as well. You know, Dortmund have had mm-hmm. are going better in Europe than they are in the Bundesliga. The same same as Atletico are, and Dortmund have their great stadium as well. So it's going to be you know really interesting tie. Maybe not as not as elite as Man City against Real Madrid last night, but two clubs and two teams who do have pedigree in the in the Champions League and are focusing on it as, you know, a, a big opportunity. As Thomas said, they are on the better side of the draw. And if they can get through this, you know, they, they won't be afraid of PSG or Barcelona in the next round because both of those teams ha- have flaws as well. And for Atletico, you know, they do look on it as an opportunity. Maybe that is why some of their form in other competitions hasn't been so good, like the the difference between the atmosphere in the stadium and the the intensity in the team, the energy in the team between the Inter Milan game and then the Barcelona game in La Liga a few days later was that both of them and it, it was just another world. It was kind of disappointing at the Barca game because you go in going, oh, that was amazing four days ago. I'm back in the stadium now. We're going to have another great occasion, and they just didn't show up. But maybe it's because you know they're they're uh, keeping all the energy, all the motivation, all the enthusiasm for it. So yeah, well let's let's talk about the style of, of football and we, we touched on the dark arts earlier um, I guess everyone knows Atletico Madrid for this sort of combative defensive style he's now signed a, a contract term until 2027 
Is there a sign or are there signs that maybe they're trying to move on from this, maybe evolve into a, a different kind of team, a different kind of proposition for opponents? Yeah, like at Atletico, transfer policy is always a bit of a black box that you, you never know exactly. Um, well, Hill Marine makes the final decisions. He's the, the CEO of the club and he's the guy who controls the money. Then there's Berta, Andre Berta is the sporting director. Then Simeone has his own ideas. And sometimes they sign different players and you, you can kind of work out, oh, that that's definitely a Simeone type signing. This one is more likely to have come from the sporting director. This one looks like Hill Marine, who has his his connections to to some of the biggest agents around. Um the feeling maybe that in order to make that final step, you know, they came so close against Madrid twice, but the the just defending and just hanging on uh, and trying to get, you know, battle your way through it. They were the best at that, but even still, even though they were the best at that, it wasn't enough to win the Champions League. So they have added more players to, to the club to try and add more strings to their bow. The question is whether Simeone is the best coach for, for a completely different style of football, but he has adapted and he has evolved. You know, as I was saying before about how they play the back three with some midfielders in it, which kind of goes against some of the trends as well. Like with City, you know, Guardiola is now playing four centre backs in a line across his back four, whereas Simeone has um, a couple of converted midfielders in his, which is is kind of weird uh, when you think about it. But when it comes down to it, if they do, you know, say they win one 0 tonight and they go to Dortmund, then they are going to you know, defend that lead. And if they are up against PSG or Barcelona in the the semi finals, and if they do make the final, it's going to be it's going to have to be, but alongside that, you know, great defense and they'll be so up for it and they, you know, they won't give any quarter at all and every 50-50 ball will, will be a battle. They have players like Griezmann, uh, like Rodrigo de Paul, who won the World Cup. Even, you know, sometimes at, at left back, Rodrigo Raquel plays, he's like a number 10 kind of, but he ends up playing left wing back to squeeze him into the team. And he's a, a really talented young kid who's come into the team. But in order to, to play for Simeone, you have to give everything. You have to to fight back. You have to cover your man. You have to go through a lot of time on the training ground with drills where, um, you know, you move six inches this way if the ball is in this direction. If it moves over here, we're all going to going to edge aside and keep compact and keep our shape and everything. So if you want to play for Simeone, even if you are skillful, you have to do that. But yeah, they are trying to add to their bow. And I guess we'll see how it works out for them. You know, uh, all right. They are trying to, to add extra things to that solid base that they have had, to the aggressive base that they've had over the years. And that's kind of the big challenge for Simeone to, to try to make it work. Yeah, Thomas, I, you know, something really glared at me there that Dermot was talking about uh, who's a Simeone signing, who's a signing from the board, right? I don't know if Joao Felix was that signing, whether it was Simeone or from the board, but do you think it's a bit of a dent to his reputation that you can't work with a player, you know, super creative, slightly enigmatic for sure, but great dribbler on his day, freaking superb. And it just hasn't seemed to work. And if you're talking about the evolution of football, surely a player like that holds the key to where Atletico Madrid could be going moving forward. Yeah, I don't think Joao Felix is the, is the only one either. You look at someone like Rodri, yeah. who maybe, you know, it could, could be argued possibly left to, to play, well, Definitely, he'd yeah. say he's, he's playing a more attractive <laughs> style of football now. Now it's well, well, you would let him unleash his full potential for sure. Yeah, exactly. I mean, with with Jar Felix, he, he to me he felt like a very unathletico signing back in in 2019. You know, he's this he's the club record signing for uh, for a 19 year old. Uh, he he seems like more of a Real Madrid player in mm. in in some ways. You know. But equally, as, as Dermot says there, it's not as if Simeone can't work with creative players. It's just that he wants those creative players to really put a shift in. You look at how pivotal Antoine Griezmann has been to, to that side, and that's just not something that Jar Felix has ever really achieved for him. I, I find it really interesting what Dermot said as well about how Jar Felix kind of becomes this symbol as well of how Atletico have changed under, under Simeone. They've gone from these underdogs to, you know, arguably as as big or, or on a, on a level with with Real Madrid or getting to that mm. level they move out of this crumbling Vicente Calderon stadium to the Metropolitano you know don't forget they're one of the teams who who found or, or tried to found this this breakaway European Super League before kind of mm -hmm. recanting on that so that seems to clash a bit with with this perception of them being underdogs and and I think that's that's something that the the, the team sometimes is is grappling with as well if that's not too uh too much of a, a metaphor to to make, I guess. Um, yeah, look, Joao Felix, I think, probably hasn't been willing to do the the dirty work at times that Simeone would like, has also maybe been 
a bit inconsistent, which I know Dermot's written about, that he he's only shown his talent in kind of... The big games. Flash, yeah, exactly. Flashes for, for Atletico. And in all this, he's still got a contract with Atletico until 2029, which he renewed just before leaving to Barca. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I, it, it's hard to see a, a positive conclusion, though, to that, to yeah. that relationship. Yeah, and I want to quickly touch on that, Dermot, in terms of, you know... You've got this big weight financially that Israel Felix still on a- a- Atletico's books, but they're not a club that spends loads either. You know, like what what's their transfer policy? Like what kind of players are they looking at? You know, we talk about the incredible scouting of certain teams in the Premier League and, you know, and globally. But what what's Atletico's focus when it comes to scouting and what they're willing to spend on a player? Yeah, it's a really good question. And a lot of Atletico fans, also ask themselves that question <laughs> qu- qu- quite often uh, and pundits it, as i said before it's a bit like the black box because there are different competing kind of power sources within the club or different voices who, who all have a say um at the end hill marine is the one who who holds the purse strings but sometimes they sign players because they think they want to sell them on like joe felix was definitely an investment they they saw him as being like a guy who was going to improve the idea was that he'd come play under simeone for a couple of years simeone would maybe knock a bit of a sense into him (laughs) yeah a bit of control and make him work a bit harder and focus more uh, and whatever and then they'd have a guy who they could sell to you know man city or psg or whoever you know make a profit on him that that was definitely the the plan for atletico for joe felix himself i'm pretty sure and for for you know his agent and the people around him as well didn't work out that way at all as as an investment it's been a disaster for for atletico um and has counted badly, you know, for Simeone. It was a problem for Simeone with the owners. They have spent quite a good bit on players from time to time, like in strange, strange ways as well. Like Lamar was a big signing for them, 60, 70 million when they signed him from, from Monaco, you know, a teammate of Kylian Mbappe in that a fantastic Monaco team from, from five or six years ago. He was another guy who you wouldn't immediately think of as a, as a Diego Simeone type midfielder. He's been a bit of a... Yeah, disaster as well. Really, he's been injured a lot, and when he has been fit, he's shown flashes of the talent that he has, but he just hasn't really fit with, with Simeone. They signed, you know, Rodrigo de Paul came in. He's more of a Simeone type player, another Argentine, a guy who Simeone had tracked for a long time. Who has he has that edge to to his play as well as we saw in the World Cup when he was kind of like Messi's protector on the pitch to an extent. But he can also pass the ball and you know, very very good passer passer of the ball. Um, so they have. A mix of players who would be hard for any coach kind of to to put together. I think that the squad often ha- has imbalances in it. You know, Memphis Depay is another one that they picked up from Barcelona, who was a very clever signing. You could argue, you know, they saw that he was a talented player available from Barcelona at a at a decent price. Um, but then he comes in and he's not ideal centre forward for for a Simeone team. So Simeone has to to try to work with him, and he has worked with him. And Memphis has scored some big goals for. Or Barca, including against Inter in the, the last 16. But is he the ideal player? Does he have to sell on? It's hard to know. So again, with Atletico, some of their transfer decisions are always difficult to decipher, I think, is, is a way of putting it. <laughs> well put. Very polit- politically put. All right. Uh, let's move on to Simeone, really, and, and I guess what his future looks like. Um, I'm going to come to you on this one. There was a time when Simeone was also you know, linked to some of the really big jobs, you know, Chelsea, Arsenal, to a certain degree, Manchester United. I think just before the pod as well, we were saying, you know what, maybe Simeone at Manchester United right now wouldn't be such a bad idea in terms of getting that passion back. Is there a feeling that now that those kind of jobs are, are sort of past him a little bit and his style of managing probably wouldn't work in these teams that are looking for something different and new and, um, I guess, innovative? I do think it probably comes down to style because clearly as a motivator, you'd, you'd argue he's, he's second to none, definitely from, from what you can see on a, on a weekly basis at Atletico. But yeah, stylistically, would he fit at uh, Liverpool, Bayern? I'm not so sure. And, and more importantly than that, even if the style was getting results, the minute you lose playing a, a, a more defensive kind of style, even if, as, as, as we've said there, it's, it's evolved into something a bit more possession-based, we know what happens in the, in the big games. And, you know, can you imagine the uproar if Manchester United lost a, a Champions League round of 16 tie having, having played that? So it's, it's difficult. I also think there's a sense that Simeone would need to manage a club, maybe a bit like Klopp, where he feels a deep emotional connection whether that be into Milan or on an international level Argentina 
and I'm not sure where he's going to get that apart from the apart from the clubs he's previously played for or or his home country. Yeah, um, Dermot, you know, feels like he's firmly an Atletico man for 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 the time moving forward. But I think something me and Thomas spoke about a little while ago was that actually. Could he deal with those demands going to a Manchester United that need uh, a ready cup? You know, uh, isn't he in the perfect position where he's almost worshipped like a god at this club? You know, whatever he does for the next few seasons, he'll be fine. The pressures of trying to take of someone like Liverpool right now, where you need to get them back firing after Jurgen Klopp, could be a bit tricky for a guy who, as we've seen, perhaps can't be as flexible as other managers. Yeah, it it is a it's a tricky one. He definitely. Say five or six years ago, you know, when Atletico, after they reached the, after they were beaten in the 2016 mm-hmm. uh, Champions League final, which is well, eight years ago now. But around that time, he was thinking very seriously about his future. Remember, he was there in Milan and his press conference after the the final, it looked like he was going to go. Like, it definitely looked like he'd taken Atletico as far as he could. And he, he didn't have the, he knew he could, or he didn't feel he could give the passion and the energy and everything that he had given in those first years at, at Atletico to, to the club. He went back to Argentina. Hill Marine flew out to Buenos Aires to, to talk to him at that stage, which was, you know, unusual. Normally it would have been the other way around f- for their meetings, but Hill Marine went to, to convince him to stay. And, you know, it's kind of, it seems like it may be a missed opportunity for, for, for Simone himself at this stage. That if he had gone to the to the Premier League, there was a lot of talk about Chelsea at that time, and it might have been, you know, he he beaten Chelsea a couple of times, or he beaten Chelsea once, especially in the Champions League in a in a big game, fantastic performance, and he was kind of fashionable at that stage, and maybe it would have worked out, but he tried to speak, he tried to learn English, you know, found it difficult to learn English, and I think he realizes himself that he does need, as Thomas said, and as uh, as Kieran Trippier said as well, that that emotional connection, that ability to communicate to to um, make the players realise how important it is. Almost scared him a little bit into gi- giving everything. It would be very difficult for him, you know, if he went to Chelsea now, for instance, or to Manchester United, to walk into those dressing rooms would be would be very difficult for him. And maybe he, there's an argument you'd have sometimes with some Atletico fans over whether he still has that same, you know, passion and enthusiasm himself day to day as he has had after, you know, 14 years. Um, you know, mentioned before about him going to the the royal wedding kind of a, a, at the weekend. Like it, that's not something that you associate with El Cholo, with the the street warrior kind of f- from before. I don't think I w- I'm not sure I'd have the the courage to actually say that to him <laughs> to his face, face to face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but maybe maybe it's true. Maybe that's why Atletico, you know, raise their games only occasionally or for the biggest occasions <laughs> now that they do. You know, can find it more difficult to get up for a trip to Almeria at, at the weekend. Um, and yeah, uh, so it, it does give you to me anyway you would wonder how it would have worked out had he gone at that stage but I think his time has gone he's not fashionable he's not Roberto De Zerbi or you know Ruben Amarim or Thiago Mata who he'd know very well who's who's at Bologna now you know these are the guys who are getting linked with the big jobs it's not Simeone and you know he has the big salary at, at Atletico as well which has been something that you know, he has has kept him attached to Atletico over the years too. Yeah, I mean, Dermot paints a wonderful picture of this sort of socialite, uh, Thomas, you know, living well with royalty, you know. He's got a pretty cushy job and he's actually taken a pay cut um, to, I guess, re- would you say reinforce his commitment to, to the cause? Look at it as from a human perspective. You're looking left and right. Well, no big clubs are really that interested. Style of football's gone. My family are here. Come on, man. Like, life is good. Yeah, he feels. I, I do like that idea of Simeone with the with the edges kind of uh, off off a bit. You know, it's smooth smoothed over a bit mm-hmm. maybe now. Um, going to these going to these royal weddings, uh, I think. Yeah, obviously the 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 reported salary before, which was you know said to be the among the highest in Europe, definitely clashed with the idea that okay, this is a guy that that can't do maybe a, a, as many styles of play mm-hmm. as as other great managers around. The pay cut maybe it is in keeping a little bit with his with his perception now. He's he's great for Atletico. He's so firmly embedded there. It's really difficult to imagine Atletico without him. But as Dermot says, he isn't attracting the same kind of suitors that he that he would be before. So 
maybe that just makes sense, really, from that point of view. Mm. Right, let's end it there. Of course, on Wednesday, Atletico Madrid take on Borussia Dortmund uh, in the Champions League. Let's see what happens there. Thomas, Dermot, thanks so much for your time. And also, don't forget to rate and review the podcast. We'll be back tomorrow.